I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. You push back on them. Left-wing extremists, they rarely shy away from calling for violence, don't they? Uh, last week, Iran's Ayatollah circulated a video depicting Iran assassinating President Donald J. Trump at Mar-a-Lago at his beach club. Twitter stalled taking action against the video that appeared on their platform. Meanwhile, Trump remains suspended for the January 6th Capitol riots, absent any proof he was at all responsible. Here with me now is executive director of the Iranian Americans for Liberty, Brian Lee, uh, sir, welcome to the Salcedo Show. Your organization, along with Air, uh, Rick Rennell, successfully pushed Twitter to ban one of the Ayatollah's accounts, but many of his other accounts remain active. The Ayatollah Khomeini and his regime have called for the extermination of Jews and now the assassination of an American president. Should Americans remain on a platform with those types of standards, Twitter? Well, Chris, it's uh, it's an honor to be on your show, and, and thank you to, to Newsmax for continuing to shine your spotlight uh, on this situation. It's the height of hypocrisy, first of all, uh, that uh, Iran's supreme leader is able to utilize Twitter in six or seven, eight different languages, but yet the Iranian people don't have access to Twitter. Uh, moreover, when Khomeini does take to Twitter, it's typically railing on the West, railing on America, spreading misinformation. And and using words like the Zionist pigs to describe Israel. Uh, so certainly uh, we don't believe that Khomeini uh, or any Islamic Republic regime officials should have access to any U.S.-based uh, so, uh, social media platforms. Uh, they are terrorists. They've been terrorists since they took power in 1979, and they've been chanting death to America, death to Israel, while censoring, murdering, and oppressing their own citizens. This is not a country that we share any values with, Chris. Uh, it is time for President Biden, or as I like to call him, President Appeasement, to stop appeasing Teasing the moles in Tehran, get tough with them. That's the only language that these terrorists in Iran understand, Chris. Well, the only uh, language that Mr. Biden understands is the appeasement language you're speaking of, sir. Jen Psaki, his spokesperson, supported Iran's ability to develop nuclear weapons. On the record last week, she also blamed President Trump for Iran's increasing aggression. Watch this. Most importantly, none of the things we're looking at now, uh, Iran's increased capability and capacity, uh, their aggressive actions that they have taken through proxy wars around the world would be happening if the former president had not recklessly pulled out of the nuclear deal with no thought as to why, what might come next. Now, we all know that Iran was legally able to enrich after 10 years under the Obama Ayatollah nuke deal. We also know that Iran was able to develop ICBM technology in that decade. How shameful is it that the regime in the United States is so supportive of the regime in Iran? They are certainly supportive of them. Uh, last year, one of President Biden's first actions that he took uh, was banning the word malign from being used in internal and external communications from the State Department to describe the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, again, this is a regime that hasn't really changed their tune all too much since they took power in 1979. And shame, shame on Jen Psaki. She's too busy on Twitter attacking the new governor of Virginia about mask mandates and other ridiculous things uh, to actually condemn the Islamic Republic. In the same press conference, I believe, Chris, a reporter asked her about this video, and all she could say was, well, I'm going to defer to our intelligence agencies. She couldn't even muster up the courage to condemn the Islamic Republic for threatening to kill our former president. So uh, it looks like all signs are pointing to continued appeasement. Uh, the uh, uh, Vienna nuclear talks, Chris, are starting back up later this week. Uh, and yes, the United States of America will be sitting at that table. It is absolutely ridiculous that our government, your government, your viewers' government continues to negotiate and engage in diplomacy with the world's foremost sponsor of terrorism and a regime that just threatened to kill our former president. It's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's insanity.
It is insanity. But as you know, the number one state sponsor of terror, the Socialist Democrat Party in this country, embraces and loves them. The real enemies, according to Socialist Democrats, are conservatives and the American people. And that's that's sad to say. Brian Lieb, thank you, man. Enjoyed our conversation. Chris, Come back soon. You just make, Up next, Chris, if I could just make TV, one more point here. One more point. Very quickly, sir. Very quickly. So while there were certainly a, a lot of Republicans that spoke out against this, and of course, Rick Grinnell also spoke out about this, not a single Democrat spoke out against this video from the Islamic Republic threatening to kill our former president. That is where their priorities are. Thanks for having me on, Chris. No worries. Great exclamation point on the interview. Thank you, sir.